Good afternoon, Professor. Good afternoon. Uh, hold on, I didn't even. Professor, how was your weekend? Oh my God, uh, it was wow. It, uh, good, thank you. Wow, that was that was like a wow. Oh my God, uh, now it was even better. It just changed for the better. Thank you. Oh, let me back up also, but that just blew my mind. That was like seven thousand. 100 karmic points. Good afternoon, Aaron. Wait, okay, I'm going back. And I'm okay. Wow. Okay. Hold on. Okay. I'm totally frazzled in a good way. One second. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, so, wow, I'm totally frazzled. That's a well, that doesn't take much, I guess. But okay. Good afternoon, Aaron. Good afternoon, Alyssa. Good afternoon, Erica. Hello, Alanelli. Oh, and yes, and right. Hello, everyone. That's cool. Um, good afternoon, Sheeran. Good afternoon, Rachel. The, yeah, the final good afternoon, Andre, to you. Good afternoon, Justin. I, <laughs> I can't believe it either, Marissa. Good, uh, good uh, uh, I'm gonna say, guys, I'm gonna say G-A-Y-Z, or gaz, or good, yes, thank you. Good afternoon to you, yeah. oh, um, oh wait, and more people are coming in, saving me from trying to uh, make the, Okay, yes, and it's even the last day and I still don't know how to work Zoom. Hold on, no, two people just came in, but they didn't, or did they? I hear it, okay, 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 so. Okay, and the weirdest thing is, right, no, I actually can't believe we've gotten to this point either. Even weirder, I can't believe that we've, oh, oh wait, okay, uh, hold on one sec. Yes, hold on. Okay. Oh, and more people are coming in. Sorry. Uh, okay. Okay. Now the funny thing is, well, okay. People are still coming. In. Uh, let me. Let me. Right. Um. Um. Although, so there's a couple of things I still have to like. They're the last couple of uh, classes or YouTube's or whatever. They do exist on YouTube, but I haven't put them in classroom yet. So there's still some bookkeeping that I still have to do, for whatever it's worth, if you care, to update Google Classroom. And I know, and I guess that's a polite way of saying that I've started tapering off at the end. Like I know, I see that a bunch of you have recently turned in old homeworks or old game things, and that's totally cool. And they will count, they will, oh, sorry, people coming in. Like things that you've turned in in the last week or two, you may not have gotten back because I haven't turned them back, but I definitely see that you've done them and you uh, they will get credited, you will get them back um, I mean, you'll, yeah, you'll, you'll get them back. Uh, um, um, but the odd thing is that, I mean, I think there's odds and ends. There's loose ends, as always, as this semester ties down. And of course, no semester is perfect. Like, of course, there are some things I would have liked to have said that I didn't get to say. And I'm sure there's things that you would have liked to have asked that you didn't get that blah, blah. But the funny thing is, yeah, I think I, Oh, and, and there's a document that I would have liked to have given you like five days ago, and I didn't. I gave it to you like an hour ago, but that document we're going to address right now. And honestly, what I think, and I'm almost hoping that I'm reading this in the tone of some of your hellos today, like actually this last class of ours should hopefully be not so frantic and somewhat, I think we're where we need to be, um, which is good. We might even have a moment or two for casual exchange um, about the future of John Jay or the future of COVID or something, something like that. Um, like, uh, what am I trying to say? Oh, so, so, but let me deal with logistics uh, um, first. Like, like, hopefully this is, what I'm about to say is not a surprise or, and hopefully it's not too rattling. So the, uh, you know, this is the last class, duh. Finally, oh, and people are still coming in, sorry, hold on. Okay, officially final exam period begins tomorrow, I think. Um, you, what you, what I wish I got you earlier, and I apologize that I didn't, but again, I think hopefully is not gonna be a big crisis in your life. What you hopefully see in Google Classroom, and tell me if you don't, but what you hopefully see in Google Classroom is there's a document there called the final exam. It is the final exam. Maybe it even says rough draft on it, but. It is the final exam. It 
that is where you're going to, that portal that's in Google Classroom. And again, tell me if this is not clear or something, but there is a portal now in, in Google Classroom that is worth 100 points that is due 11.59 p.m. Tuesday, the May 25th, which I believe is the last day of final exam period. Um, your job will be to turn that thing into me by then. Same rules as always, which is you can work together, you can use the internet, you can use the solutions and the numbers that I've put in there for you. And I'm gonna address that directly today. I mean, I will, I will actually kind of walk you through that thing in a minute or two, but just to be as, oh, and more people are coming, hang on. In fact, let me plug something in, hold on. Okay. Um, um, all right. Let, let me back up for a second since people are still just coming in right now. Um, first of all, the, hopefully today's class is not going to be frantic and hopefully it will be relaxed and hopefully it's mostly here to address any and all concerns about our final responsibilities to one another before we exit this den of vipers and house of iniquity. Um, and so that we can all walk away with hopefully like good grades and all of that. Uh, so, so just to repeat, just because people are still coming in, to be as clear as possible, there's a document in Google Classroom um, as of a couple hours ago, there's a, a assignment in Google Classroom, which is the final exam. Uh, that document is the final exam. The odd thing is that document is mostly solved for you. Like there's questions in there and there are not only answers, but solutions sort of typed out in different ways in there. Your job is to return that document, to, to return your own version of that document to me by 11.59, Tuesday the 25th. Um, um, that document won't change unless I find errors or ambiguities or something. Like I, I reserve, that, that document is a rough draft in that I reserve the right to give you updates if I find issues but I'm not looking to find issues and I'm not looking to change it or anything like that. Um, um, uh, right. I, I mean, I, I don't know why my pause. Oh, anyway, I'm not looking to make changes, um, et cetera. If I do make an update or a change, I will ask you to pay attention to that and throw away the old document and, and, pay attention to the new, but basically your job is to turn in your work for that to me by 11.59, Tuesday the 25th. Because I do think we've been very clear with each other and worked very hard this semester. And I think there's been a lot of back and forth like amongst all of us. The one thing I, I, I feel like we've all at this point kind of had a chance to learn from the midterm and with midterm corrections and stuff, um, oh, and again, and there are some loose ends. I know I still owe you some of you some individual things that either came in later, so including in some cases some midterm corrections. I haven't forgotten, but yes, I do apologize. Like, basically, there are loose ends, and I and I know they're there, and I will still get them back to those of you for whatever the exceptional reasons are, or if things came in late and stuff. But you're not being punished. I'm just like haven't gotten to it yet. But, um, but the thing is. You're going to turn a document into me by a, by Tuesday night, where you're showing, to the best of your ability, that you understand why the answers to the questions are the answers to the questions. In other words, again, I'm mostly giving you the answers, so it's not a competition over who can find the right answers for the most part. I mean, I'll tell you the exceptions in a minute, but it, I know you have the answers because either I am giving them to you or they're like all over the web or whatever. You're trying to show me that you understand the answers. And I think you all get that at this point. But the main instruction that I just want to emphasize as much as I can, the main instruction, like your hardest job that you have a week to do is to prepare a document that I can read, follow, and grade on its own. Like, like, you, like even if you end up feeling like you're basically copying 
my solutions over onto a piece of paper to hand in, even if you feel like that's what you're doing. And even if you're like, I don't even see what the point of this is. I basically feel like I'm just copying his answers over to turn back to him for him to grade his own answers. Well, first of all, I hope you end up not quite just doing that. But even if that ends up feeling like to you, like what you're doing, assume that I know physics, but assume that I don't have a separate document with the questions next to me. Assume that I don't. Assume that I don't remember each individual question as you're going. You need to make the question clear to me. That is like a, actually a huge part of your job. And I and this is a part that hope everybody who's been listening knows this, but I need you all to know you're going to, at each question in the exam, even if you end up thinking you're basically copying the answers over, you make the individual question super clear to me before you do anything else. Like you say, given this, find wavelength or whatever, and you make it clear to me without just cutting and pasting my words. Like if you actually ended up creating a whole document where you cut and paste all my individual questions and then put your answers in, you would be spending a long time on wasted time, first of all. Second of all, it would really be wasted because that's not what I'm looking for. I don't want you to literally copy my questions over and then answer underneath. I want you to rephrase my question in your words. It's actually like part of your job is to show me that you know what the question is, then do the work and then box the final answer and like, show me this is the final answer. Like I should be able to look at your document and be like, okay, they're solving for blah, solve, 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 solve. Oh, they found blah, next, okay? So you, many of you might even think that you end up putting more effort into finding a way to express the question to me and express the final answer to me than anything else. You might even end up feeling like you're mostly copying my work, but you're packaging it with showing that you know what the question is and showing that you know what the answer is without cutting and pasting. And whether that sounds like a kindergarten job or not, or whether that sounds like totally unfair or not, and I hope it doesn't at this point, but I just want to repeat, don't cut and paste my questions, rephrase them or phrase them. And obviously there's only so many ways to rephrase. I'm not saying you have to make up a whole new language, but somehow, because show that you know what the question is, then do the work, 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 and then answer it. And then the next one, show you know what the question is, work, 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 answer it, et cetera, et cetera. And I'll say one more, and I, I don't mean to spend this whole period like yelling this instruction again, but I, I do wanna be as firm as possible because I kind of think at this point, especially with a take-home exam, that's open source, open everything. Like th this is really where the thought comes in is you wanna show me that you get what the question is and you wanna make it really super easy for me to grade. I don't wanna flip back and forth between, between things to grade. Um, I, uh, there won't be any time. Um, but now last point on that, um, after you make clear, okay, like given source moving at 80 meters per second, find wavelength according to source, and then you start doing your work. Now, in many cases, many of you are gonna be basically, you're gonna have my solutions right next to you in many cases, and or in the circuit problem, same thing. You'll have my solutions right next to you. And you may feel like you're kind of just like copying over my solutions into your page. Obviously, I want to encourage you to, to not just copy, but let me make it easier for you to know whether that's what you're doing or not. Please remember your job, the test is to only write down things that you actually understand. So if you're copying something and you don't get it, you know you're doing something wrong. And please know at this point, I think some of you found on the midterm, if you copy things that I wrote, but you don't understand what you're copying, that will come through. It just, it will. And first and foremost, remember if you were, if I were trying to copy a tech, uh, a page of Arabic, like I don't, I don't write Arabic, I wish I did, but I don't read or write Arabic. So if someone gave me a page or even a paragraph of Arabic, I could, and this is just an arbitrary example. Like, I mean, it could be Japanese, whatever. But if I had a page of Arabic and I were trying to copy it, like I could try really hard to copy it symbol for symbol. And I could be really, really careful copying for symbol for symbol. But if I literally don't understand Arabic, I think you all know, like I'm not going to copy it right. I mean, there's going to be all these places where I think I'm copying the symbol right. But if I'm not even familiar with the symbol, I'm going to be guessing like, does the line go up that way or that way? Right. And now this is an extreme example. But if I literally just try to copy something, there's no assurance that I get it right unless I actually understand what I'm trying to copy. 
But furthermore, let's go a step further. Let's say I do sort of um, understand some Arab or some other language. Oh, sorry. Oh, I think there. Oh, okay. Wait, I see something in the private chat. Let me. Oh, maybe not for all. Okay, wait. Okay, I'm going to address fair question in the private chat about solutions. All right, I'm going to get to that in one second. Okay, fair enough. Uh, there's a question in the private chat that says, I don't see the solutions for all the questions on the document. That is true and that is fair. Let me address that directly in a second. I guess what I'm just, so maybe even what I'm saying now is not even as necessary as I think it is, but I just want to caution you all that you in your hearts, uh, you've heard this from me before, but let me just get it out of the way since it's the last time we're talking about this. You know, when I used to study for physics, like in graduate school and college, when I would study for exams, especially if I really knew what was on them, but if say they were like conventional, like closed books, walk into the room, take the exam kind of thing. The way I would study is I would copy, like I would have the solution from the professor over uh, for the typical problem or the sample problem or the problem that I actually knew would be on the thing. And I would, the way I would study is I would spend time like trying to copy over the solutions over and over and then try to copy without looking. Here in this case, you don't even have to be not looking. You can be looking the whole time. But what I know from experience is even the act of copying like does a lot and forces us to understand things and stuff. And while we're copying, we know whether we're under, it helps us find out whether we're understanding what we're copying or not. And we know from experience, you know and I know that there's a big difference between copying something that you get and something that you don't get. And when you're copying something you get, you end up copying it a lot less. Like you're like, oh, I get the point. And then you just start racing through the math or whatever. That's what you want to do here is you just want to make sure that the only things you're writing down are things that you understand. And even if your solutions end up looking a lot like mine, as long as you actually understand what you're writing, I'll know that and you'll know that. And as long as you make clear your understanding, then you win. Just just again, just don't write things that you don't understand because that will be transparent, I guess is the shorter way to say what I'm trying to say. But now actually, I almost forgot, uh, someone in the private chat has a good point. Let me actually turn to the, to the document if I can. You're right, I actually did a weird thing in the document where I actually in a way gave you some answers and not others. Uh, uh, can I screen share this? Well, all right, L let me speak from memory. For it. Oh yeah, all right, I'm gonna screen share the document. Hold on a second. But you're you're actually right. I have to be I have to be more careful what I'm saying. Uh, yes. Okay, okay. Okay. Oh, and she's still there. That's awesome that you're still there. Uh, wait. Um, professor? Oh, sorry. Yes. Um, I don't think this is the exam that is posted on Google Classroom. Unless oh. it's just an end. Like there's oh. an exam that's from the summer of 2014. And oh, my God. About Gauss and oh. oh, my God. And other things. Oh, my God. Thank you. Wait, I, I bet you're right. I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm so glad we're having this discussion. No wonder there's confusion. Thank you. And thank you for showing your video too. Oh my God, that's a total mistake on my, all right, let me give you the right thing. Holy smokes. Uh, no wonder there's confusion. Okay, sorry. Oh my God, that's, that would be very intimidating. That would be very upsetting. Yes, I mean, that is very upsetting. Hang on, thank you. What did I do? Okay, I mean, I know what I did. All right, hang on, thank you. God, I'm suddenly very glad that we're meeting right now. You're absolutely right. I'm sure you're absolutely right. Wait, in fact, now I don't even see. Wait, you're, you're totally right, but where? Oh, okay, 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 okay. Holy smokes, I'm so, thank you. See, if everybody would show their videos all the time, that would happen. Oh yes, that is totally the wrong document. Oh my God, yeah, that would be a nightmare. I am so sorry. Okay, okay. Holy smokes. What a way to end. It's coming, so the actual correcting is coming. And in fact, okay, I totally obviously did not do, I'm not even gonna pretend 
But I'm actually curious, when I correct this now, I'm curious how this works. I've always wondered. Hang on. That would be crazy. That is not the exam I mean to give you. Hold on. The, the real thing is uploading right now. Uh, and we'll all check it and make absolutely sure. Hold on. Okay. Wait until. Now, what I just did was I just changed the file. I, I've always wondered how this works in Google Classroom. Please tell me, like, what I think I just did was swap out the documents for that same portal, but I've never known how that worked. Like, it, what, it did work, or yeah, you just stopped them. Okay, thank you, and and thank you, and thank you so much. Hey, and both of you are showing it. Thank you for showing your videos. That is so nice. And But thank you for catching that, Kimberly, and both of you. And hang on one second. I'm just going to fix that in the other class, too. That's crazy. You're still right, though. Whoever was that, someone said in the private chat, there still are some answers that are not there, but it's not nearly uh, the situation that it may have looked like. Hold on. But, and we're still going to talk about it right now. Let me just fix this in the other class before it goes away. Okay, uh, now, so we're gonna start talking. So the document that, oh, well, let me just go to chat to me. I hope probably everything in the chat is about the mistake I just made, but let's see, or maybe it's, a, yeah, no, thank you, right, okay. Yeah, oh my God, okay. And someone already printed it out, my God. Oh, listen, you're so responsible, okay. Sorry, yeah, yeah, wow. And you guys are so polite to have let that go for that long, Jesus, okay, all right. Thank you. And no, that was a total mistake. So now hopefully we're looking at the correct thing. And in fact, um, oh, and you realize that because I started screen. Okay. So the thing that I'm sharing, although am I even sharing the right thing? I don't even know what I'm, no, I'm, I'm still not actually quite sharing the wrong thing. You're sharing the right one. But is it a word? It's a word doc. Yeah, yeah it's a so word that's doc. All right. So that's only. Right. Okay. Thank you. So one more, my bad, one more, like it is the right problem. You're right, but it's uh, okay. 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 Again, I know I've mentioned this a hundred times, but you've got the Gus, go to YouTube and watch the Gus Johnson video where he's like how to be a professor and he makes fun of professors using technology. It is so funny. All right. It's so accurate. All right. Now I think I'm looking at the right, I think, tell me if I'm wrong, I think what I'm sharing now is the thing that is your exam. Okay, and it is due Tuesday and everything. It's 11 pages, okay, some of the, and by the way, I just gave like every equation known to man, like some of those equations you're not using anyway, and that's fine. Um, I think the directions are correct. Yes, yes, it's two pro, all right. So 
here we are doing, the, thank you for your patience. So we're doing a walkthrough here. It, let's just say overall, it's two problems. One is worth 60 points, one is worth 40 points, 60 points for the Doppler effect thing that we've been talking about forever, 40 points for a circuit, and uh, ho um, hopefully the circuit isn't so bad. Um, it's also 60, in, let's, in fact, I'm even gonna talk about the circuit thing first. Let, let's scroll, so I'm scrolling. Like the, the Doppler effect thing is first, because that's what you would expect. I mean, you know, it's, but the circuit, oh, which is labeled problem three, I'm sorry, I'll fix that. Uh, it's just to say problem two, not actual, not problem three. But that circuit is the circuit. Um, it does have a full solution there. Um, you know, the, one of the, and I am assuming that you've talked about this with Wu a lot. It's not meant to be a trick. It's not meant to be a crazy circuit. Hopefully the symbols are what you recognize. You definitely today would be a day you could stop me if there's anything unclear about it. Oh, I'll say this right now. The, re the circuit, I mean, excuse me, the resistors are labeled R5, R6, R7, and R8 just because of some weird quirk in the program that I used back then when I wrote. There's no deep reason for that. They could have been called R1, R2, R3, and R4, but they just happen to be called what they're called. That's not meant to be confusing or significant in any way. I'm just looking at the chat. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so uh, the circuit, the, the bottom line behind the circuit is you've got four resistors and a battery, you're ultimately being asked to find the current at four different places in the circuit, you know, at the four different resistors, and you're being asked to find potential drops across each of the four resistors. So you're ultimately being asked for eight separate values, but as you would see in the solutions, some of the value, some of your answers will be the same as others. And as long as you show why, that's totally fine. And that also means that some of your values might take less work to get than others. Like once, you, once you've gotten certain values, then a lot of things fall into place and that's totally understandable. So you might get the same answer more than one time, but just somehow explain why you're getting the same answer, you know, more than one time. You might use the same explanation as me, but as I did, but you know, with circuits, as many of you know, you know, there's more than one way to skin a cat all of which are disgusting, but there's more than, you know, you, some of you might not do it in the same order that I do. And I would highly encourage you. I mean, the, the circuit is definitely a case where if you do it slightly differently or you want to start or you want to go in a different order, by all means, that will just give you a greater chance to show that you really understand what you're doing, especially if you get the same answers as I do. Um, you know, there's a part of me that feels like I should change the numbers th to ask you to do for your actual final exam like that. I think you could handle it if I suddenly change it, but I'm not even going to do that. Okay. We're going to leave the numbers as they are to reduce confusion or anything like that. So really the whole big speech that I was giving 10 minutes ago, that probably sounded really weird if you didn't see any answers in the exam was largely about this circuit problem where I'm literally spoon feeding you the solutions. So your job is to show me as best as possible that you get why what we're doing makes sense. So therefore, the more you could do it in your style or you could do it in a different order or you could do it with different colors or saying the more you can just like show that you actually get it, the better. And you will have confidence, hopefully, because you'll know your answers are right because like there they are. Okay, oh, and lastly, that whole thing is worth 40 points and it's eight separate values you're looking for. So it's just meant to be straightforward, like five points for each value, even though some will require more explanation than others, but it's just five points for each value that's, you know, 40% of the exam right there. And I, I'm, I don't mean to rush or spaz out. Definitely, we're here today so that you can look at it. You can see if there's anything confusing or wrong or different from the way Wu has been doing it um, uh, uh, or anything like that. Um, but that's the circuit thing. Um, okay. Uh, but now the Doppler thing is maybe a little bit more intimidating and a little bit more like meant to put together everything we've been saying for a while. The Doppler thing is worth 60 points. Let me also say, it says it right at the beginning, the whole thing is worth 60 points. Every individual little question until the way end is worth two points. Like if I did the math right, there's basically four groups of six little questions that are very repetitive. Just, you know, be careful. But so there's like 24, wait, is that right? Yeah, there's 24 of these little questions 
So each one's worth two points. Again, some of them might require more explanation than others. So do that, um, but each one is worth two points. That also means realistically for anybody who's keeping score at home. I mean, it basically means for every one of those questions, as long as you write anything relevant at all, it'd be pretty hard for me to give you zero credit. So for good or for bad, each one of those, it's kind of like you're gonna get one point for doing anything relevant. And then you'll get the other point for really strutting your stuff and showing that you're making sense. And it does mean that if I want to be, and I don't think I do, but if I really want to be a jerk or something on some of those, if you literally, well, no, I am gonna say this because this did happen on the midterm. I mean, even though they're each worth two points, if you literally just put an answer, if you just wrote like two meters, even if that's the right answer, I might only give you one point rather than zero because I want to see that you show me, you know, the question is, and you're showing work and you're boxing the answer, blah, blah. So, you know, go to town. But, but I also have to admit, okay, this thing, this whole Doppler effect question is sort of like promised. I mean, I hope it's not a surprise to you, but kind of like promised, I'm, 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 I'm asking about like different cases and kind of asking you to do the same thing over and over with the different cases. All the information that you are to use for this Doppler effect problem, all even though I did repeat the number 80, just to be as clear as possible in there, all the information that I'm expecting you to use is all here on this page seven. Now, this is a big, I mean, you know, this is kind of an example here, page seven, like everything you need to know about this problem is here on page seven. And in fact, if you really look at it carefully, what I really have done is I, I'm not just giving you the facts here, I've actually solved everything for, in a, in a way, I've solved everything here on page seven. On the, so on the one end, if you basically know what you're doing and you've been following in class or you have your notes and stuff, if you basically get it, then any little reminders or any details that you might still be confused about hopefully are straightened out for you right here on page seven. On the other hand, I think it's also clear, if you just started paying attention right now, I don't mean this punitively, but like there's so much information on page seven that if you don't know what I'm talking about, or you haven't been thinking about the Doppler effect at all, or you don't stop and think about it, it, at least to my mind, page seven is a total mess. I don't mean it to be that way, but it's kind of a big intimidating, overwhelming mess if you don't really know what you're looking for or why. Um, so this is kind of all, like the flip version of what I was saying before. Hopefully, if, if you're with me still and you're showing video or whatever, um, you will ultimately see that this page is kind of uh, is kind of a solution model for you to answer almost all of the questions on the prior pages. But as long as we're all together and I'm saying this, um, um, you will know one thing that I did that maybe is obnoxious. I hope not, but just to keep like here's the compromise on the circuit problem. I'm not even changing the numbers. You're literally going to hand in literally that problem to me with literally those numbers. So you will know that you have it right. There won't be, I mean, that's just, it's that much of a straightforward arrangement on the circuit problem. Here, I'm doing one thing that's slightly professory, I guess, which is that, and so I wanna make this clear now for anybody who's paying attention. Page seven is every single possible calculation for every single, for, every, for the different cases, what, well, for three different things. For if there's no Doppler effect at all, that's all in the left-hand column. Um, wait, let me, let me back up and say this again. What's happening on page seven is I'm first showing you what frequency the receiver would get if there was no Doppler effect at all. If the source was just sitting there and the receiver was just sitting there and the source sent stuff to the receiver. Um, just as almost a control or as the solution method or as the base case or whatever you want to call it. That's first what I'm doing all the way to the left, showing what frequency the receiver would measure if nothing interesting were happening. And the answer is the exact same frequency as the source would measure, 500, in this case, 500 hertz. Okay, and again, we're, I'm not changing the numbers or anything like this is your exam. Then, then um, I'm doing, um, then I'm doing, as you see in the top middle, then I have the source approaching and we go through the whole solution method, the whole solution method, and we get what 
the received frequency would be, or in other words, what the frequency according to the receiver would be. And when the source approaches, we get a number that's a lot higher than the given original frequency of 500, we get 654, okay? Then I'm doing what happens if instead of, uh, instead of the source approaching, if instead the receiver approaching, and we get a number that's also higher than 500, but not the same as 654, we get 617. This is no news. This is like the point that I've been trying to make over and over in class, but it's sketched out here. Two things now happen that make this like a worthy final exam or whatever. Number one, you'll notice that then the page goes on and what's sketched out in all the exact numbers is the, not sketched out, I mean, what's done out in detail in the rest of the page is the thing that I keep talking about in class, but never literally did out for you. What's literally done out on the, on the second row of this page is a comparison to what would go on if instead of waves, these were particles, which I do feel is sort of the punchline of all of this. It's sort of the purpose of all of this to show the subtle difference between what would happen if we shot a stream of little waves versus a stream of little particles. What's happening at the bottom of this page is, is the thing I keep saying in class, but here are the numbers. I'm saying that even if you shot, that if you shot out particles, you would get an effect that kind of looks like the Doppler effect. That is the received frequency would be higher than the source frequency. It would be higher than 500, just like it was for the actual Doppler effect of waves. Um, it, 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 it would be higher, um, but what you see at the bottom of the pages, it would be higher by the exact same amount, whether the source is approaching or the source is receding. What I'm trying to say at the bottom of the page is, like this, this to me is the subtlety of the Doppler effect, that source approach versus, source approach versus receiver approach, they would both get higher frequency than source frequency, but they would get two different frequencies if it was a true Doppler effect truly happening with waves. On the bottom of the page, it's showing that if you shot particles rather than waves, it might look like a Doppler effect because indeed the receiver would not agree with the source over frequency. Like indeed at the bottom of the page, the source is measuring 500 as he is for everyone, you know, for the base case, for the Doppler effect case, the source is still measuring 500 and the receiver is getting something else, something in the 600s here, right? So that look, but as I'm sure I'm overstating now, but you see like whether the receiver or the source, whether the receiver or the source is approaching actually affects the number in the case of waves, it does not end up affecting the number in the case of particles. Now it's all done out for you here on this page. The one catch that makes this a final exam, I hope this is not too cruel or too unfair or whatever, is in, in your exam questions, like if you go back now to the page, okay? I'm, all the questions I'm asking right here, like and asking you to answer, are, are literally all the questions that are done out on that page. But indeed, the one obnoxious thing I'm doing, the one thing that, the one thing I'm doing here is, I'm asking you to solve for source recede and receiver recede. Whereas on that page, I did source approach and receiver approach. Let me say that again, just to be super clear, whether this is good news or bad news to you. I mean, some of you, I think this will make it more interesting. Some of you may be annoyed by this, but I'm saying that I have literally done out the full solution for you if it's source approach versus receiver approach. What I'm asking you to do in the exam pages is compare uh, a source recede versus receiver recede. Now, honestly, where does that make a difference? Just in the in minus signs. Like it, all the numbers will be affected just by certain minus signs. That if you're, I mean, all you have to do is certain places where I put pluses, you're going to put minuses, and certain places where I put minuses, you're going to put pluses. Um, and it, that, I mean, that's and and you'll get your own numbers and your numbers will follow the same pattern as on that page. So like, uh, what am I trying? So, um, but, where you, but where you have to, but I do want to warn you, like I've solved, the, I've solved the approach cases fully. I'm asking you to do the recede cases. You, you'll be able to check, you'll know if your answers are right. You can also, by the way, once you do this out, 
certainly you can go on the web and use that equation on the web if you like it to check your answers and make sure your answers are right. Like you can do that, but, but, but don't like show me that. That's just for your head. I'm saying that you, you can solve every single question that I'm asking you here on the exam. You can solve it by literally following the exact solution method right there on page, whatever that page is on page seven. Um, and I'm saying the numbers are those numbers. Like the given frequency is 500. The speed of the waves is 340. The speed of approach or receipt or whatever is 80. Like none of the numbers are changing. Use those numbers. Just note that what I've solved for you there is approach. You're going to show me that you actually understand something by doing receive instead. Um, you know, um, uh, all of this whole, and I'm almost done just yammering. Um, all of this thing is all true and based on the fact that speeds always move, <laughs> speeds, that waves always move one and only one speed um, uh, based on their medium. And we spent a long time proving that by deriving the second order partial differential wave equation. Just to note for good or for bad, I'm not testing you on that here. I mean, to be to honest, part of me even regrets that fact. I'm not testing, like you don't have to do anything with partial differentiation. You don't have to do anything with that whole wave equation proof that we did spend a long time on. I want you to know that the purpose of all of that was to, to justify that this is true, but I'm not asking you to do any of that. I'm, what I'm asking you to do is to follow my model for approach to show what you conclude about recede. Um, and finally, and then I'll shut up and I'll answer questions, whatever, finally, you'll see what's worth 12 points, maybe the place where you can be the most creative or the most strut your stuff or whatever. I'm asking in part E for you to put this together and just like stand back and say how this shows the difference between thingy things and unthingy things like, um, which, which it does. I mean, it, the numbers that I've done on that page show that like thingy things would get the same frequency whether it's the source or the receiver moving, unthingy things would not. But I want you to put that into your words and show me why or how. Um, oh, there's other people here. Oh, sorry, oh, okay, other people coming. And then, so I'm gonna I'm gonna shut up for a second. First of all, I'm gonna look in the chat. But I definitely want to. We we have like a half hour. So I I want you to look at this and see that you you got a week to do this and you can work together and all that. But I do want you to make sure you understand what it is I'm asking you to do. Um, like before we say goodbye. So please like look at it, look at the pages, see if you get it. Let me, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna shut up and I'm gonna look in the chat. Oh, oh okay, okay. Right. Oh, oh, that's fair. Okay, hold on a second. Okay, so there's a lot in the chat, but some of it's private, some of it's public. So let me, let me, hold on. Oh yeah, okay, wait, so the, wait. All right, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take two minutes to try. I'm gonna to try to answer some of the private questions in the private chat just in case, but then I'm gonna say them publicly too, but there are some good questions here. So everybody look at it for a second.
Okay, okay. No, there are good observations and questions in the chat. I just try, so some of them were private, so I tried to just like answer privately, but I wanna actually now answer them publicly. Okay, first of all, and please everybody, again, this is, I mean, this might not be the most interesting, but let me just say again, for anybody who just walked in, like this is your final exam. And I'm I'm pretty sure I, I have no interest in changing it. Like this is it. So this is our opportunity to totally make sure that we get it right now. Like, so that is what we're doing here is making sure we all understand the final exam, especially because like you haven't been sitting on it for a week or something like that, you just got it. So let's like really make sure that we get it. Now, one thing is, so I'm saying, so and it, hopefully the screen share, yeah, is still happening. So I'm saying, and for people that are just tuning in now, like, like this, there's two problems on the exam. There's a 60 point Doppler effect problem, 40 point exam, uh, 40 point circuit problem. With the circuit problem, literally, there's not like, as long as you really understand my solutions, then you're going to show that you understand them and you're going to get 40 points. Like even the numbers are not going to change. So there should be no, the only mystery that will be in your mind by the time you hand in the circuit problem is whether you've thoroughly enough, like proven to me that you really get it. And the truth of the matter is if you really get it, then you probably automatically will be showing me that you really get it. And if you don't actually get circuits, probably any efforts you put in to show me that you do will be transparent. I mean, anyway, so the circuit thing hopefully is meant to be not mysterious. This 60 point Doppler effect problem, there's a little thought that you are gonna have to put into it to be sure. One thing is what I am trying to say, and, and by the way, also this video will be posted. And oh, also, by the way, I should say, even though I'm a little bit, one of the loose ends I haven't tied up is there's a couple of the most recent classes I didn't yet put into Google Classroom, but they still totally are on YouTube as, as will this one be. And this, you know, for anybody who, I mean, this is the class that we're explaining the final exam. So please like, if you're tuning in and out right now, or if you have a friend who's not here or something, please know that any questions you have about the final exam, like they're, they're, it'll, it'll be on YouTube. And even if it's not in Google Classroom, like just go to the YouTube thing and it'll be there. Um, um, but so one really important question that a number of people are asking me in the private chat is like, yeah, I'm saying for this whole Doppler effect problem, this whole like page uh, five, this problem that spans page five and six, I'm saying all the numbers for that problem, every number you need, take it straight literally from this page seven, all of the numbers. Now, the reason there's a little confusion, all of them, like the 340 applies, the 80 applies, the 500, I mean, not all the answer, but you know, like, well, even, well, you know what I'm saying, like all the given numbers, the speed of the wave relative to the medium is 340. The frequency of the wave relative to source is 500. The, um, uh, the speed of the thing that's moving relative to the air is 80. But now here's why that may be a little confusing, why a number of people ask me in the private chat, like, are we taking numbers or not? The, the, reason some of you, the reason it's a good question is, yes, you will notice that the one number I quoted over and over in pages um, five and six, I did keep repeating the 80, but I didn't repeat the other numbers. So I totally understand if you're looking at this for the first time, or if suddenly three days from now you're looking at this, you might think, wait, why is he saying the 80, but he's not saying the other numbers? Like, am I supposed to take the 80, but I'm not supposed to take the other numbers? Fair question, but no, here's why. The reason I'm repeating the 80 number and not repeating the others is all the others are literally fixed. Like 340 is the speed of the wave relative to the air no matter which case you're in, no matter whether something's approaching or receding or it's the sort, like that number is that, it means the same thing no matter what. It is the, in, in all the wave cases, 340 is the speed of the wave relative to the medium. Similarly, 500, like 500, I do want you to take from that page. You are supposed to take the numbers from that page and then maybe I should have been more explicit about this, but the reason I didn't just keep repeating 500 is 500 means the same thing in all the cases. It is literally the um, frequency of the wave as measured by the source. 80 
The reason I had to keep saying 80 is because the actual meaning of the 80 changes from case to case. Like in one case, 80 is the speed with which the source is moving toward the receiver. In another, and the receiver sitting still at zero. In, an, in another case, and maybe I should read this directly off the page in a moment, but in another case, the receiver is moving in toward the source at 80, while the source sits still at zero relative to the medium. So what I'm saying is like all the numbers you should take from that page, but technically speaking or properly speaking, like the two key velocity numbers are 80 and zero, but they sort of get traded around from case to case. In one case, this object is, one object is going zero and the other one's going 80. And then the next case, the first object's going 80 and the other object's going zero. So just so that I'm not, so that I can be technically proper, I'm sort of telling you in each question on page five and six, I'm saying, okay, this thing has the 80 and that thing has the zero. And I'm using English to tell you whether the 80 is like going in one direction or another. That, that's the other thing. But whether you're going to make the 80 a negative or a positive, that's a decision that you're going to make based on, first of all, on your diagram. And, and I'll tell you right now how to make the decision, like the strategy that I'm telling all of you, and that is done all over page seven. The strategy is no matter what the situation is, draw a little diagram, like for each new situation, draw a little diagram, and whichever way the transmission is going, like the wave, like if the wave is going from left part of your page to the right part of your page, then call that the positive direction. And anything that's going against that, we get a negative sign. Right, and that is what I'm doing on page seven. So whether you're copying my model or you're understanding that strategy, like you'll still find like nowhere in the questions am I telling you, like you'll notice in all of the cases of the questions that I'm saying, I never use the number negative 80 because I'm just literally saying the speed of approach is 80 or the speed of recession is 80 and I'm telling you like, the direction. So you have to make a decision whether it's negative or positive. And you notice that sometimes it's one thing going 80 and the other thing going zero. And other times it's one thing going zero and the other thing going 80. So that's why the 80 number is the one that I'm actually explicitly like repeating through the questions because that's the kind of the number you have to think about and you have to do things with and you have to be careful with. So I'm, I'm trying to phrase my English as carefully as I can around that. But all the other numbers, yes. You, and, and if you want to write now, all of you can write now, write directly into the exam. If you want to literally write into your exam, you know, FWM equals 340 for all the cases, you certainly can. And, and that brings up the other good question that was in the chat. And this may be super important. Wait, what have time is it? Someone else did bring up in the chat, or maybe it was public. I don't remember if it was public or private, but someone did point out in the chat. I mean, I know who the person was. I just don't remember if it was public or private, but someone did point out that, yeah, actually this page is very hard to read, particularly the subscripts. So there's a couple of things. One, hopefully maybe, I don't know if you can actually like zoom in or screenshot. I hope you can, but if you can't, let me, or assuming you can't, I think it's too late for me to reprint the page and I'm kind of scared. And I did kind of on purpose want everything to be on one page, but I definitely right now can read those subscripts to you if that helps at all. I, I would like to actually, like, I don't want there to be, this is not about playing, excuse me. It's not about playing hide the ball. So actually at the risk of boring people in a minute, I'm actually gonna go from top to bottom and read out the facts of this page. Hopefully also in reading them, it might also make it clear to you what you do or don't understand or what you might have questions about. So I'm gonna do that in a second. I'm gonna read out the subscript and maybe if you have to pen them in, I mean, I apologize that they're not bigger, but uh, let me just look in the chat though before I do that. Oh yeah, and so, okay, wait, wait. So I'm gonna do that in a second, but let me see the chat part here. Oh yeah, yeah. Right, right. Um. Um, 
Okay, so two questions in the private chat, and then I'm going to read these subscripts out loud. Uh, one question is a little harder to answer than the other, so I was just thinking. But one question in the private chat that I can read out loud is, it says in the private chat, so just to be clear, the final is only two topics, circuits and Doppler effect. That is a fair and important question. That is what we're here to clarify. And the answer is yes, yes. Like for good or for bad, and again, I don't mind, even for those of you who may think that I've already answered, like this is the time to take the risk. Like, even if one of you didn't hear that, ask it again, whatever. Like, this is the day to ask those questions. So I am saying, for good or for bad, even though we've, I think we've done a lot in this course. And okay, I mean, I think you've done some other things in this course that I'm not putting on this exam for good or for bad. But it is the fact that this exam that you're having is this two things Doppler effect and circuits. In my heart of hearts, I feel like there's a lot of other things we, I feel like to truly understand the Doppler effect, you have to understand a lot of the other things we did earlier than that in the course. That's why I'm justifying it in my mind. And I really don't want your exam to be too long or too crazy at this point for a thousand reasons. I also can't grade something too long or too crazy at this point. But yes, for good or for bad, this is your exam. These two things, Doppler and circuits, that is it. And there won't be any changes unless I find errors or something like that. And that is fair to ask. And I want that to be as clear as possible. So any other things like that, you can, even if you feel like someone's already asked something, you can still ask it. But the other question is in the private chat, it's a little bit um, harder to answer. Let me, uh, I'm not going to exactly read it out loud, but hold on. Let me, um, yeah, I, I mean, I honestly think that the place in this whole exam that maybe is the hardest or that will really, the place in this exam where the rubber will really hit the road, where, where, where I think the grades will separate the most, if that makes any sense, is the 12 points that you're getting for part E of problem one. Part E is worth 12 points. Um, um, uh, I think though, I think there will be a lot more variation. I think some people will get all those 12 points and some people will get very few of them. I certainly could tell you right now, don't leave it blank. If you leave part E blank, that's zero. That would be a big mistake. Um, but if you write anything relevant at all, if you show that you're understanding, but that question is you'll, you'll probably start by getting three or four points, but then I really want you to show me something. I mean, that is really where I'm gonna see really where there, how much you understand all this or not. And frankly, for those of you who have been working very hard all semester and are maybe those of you who are like amazed that there aren't other things on this exam, this would be a place, I mean, strut your stuff here, but, 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 and so, so there is the most room for interpretation on this question, E, 12 points. What I'm literally saying though is yes, using your own words, your own diagrams and your own numbers, explain how we use the Doppler effect in order to find out whether something is particles or is waves ultimately, okay? Um, so I am actually, at, I'm asking you to summarize the results that are on that page seven for approach and or what you're gonna get with your own numbers for recede. I say use your own pictures, use your own words, put this all together. Um, 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 I do say use your own numbers. And that's what the person's asking about in the private chat. What do I mean by your own numbers? Um, that, that is a fair, do I mean that you have to make up an entirely new fresh example now? No, you don't have to. By your own numbers, what, I, what that could mean is the numbers that you were generating in the last two pages doing the recede case, okay? I mean, I'm giving you all these numbers for the approach case and solving it, but I'm asking you questions for the last two pages over recede. So you can, so when I say you use your own numbers, I, it could be the results that you just got in those above questions. You could do that. You could also, if you really wanna show that you really know, like if you wanna blow me away or blow yourself away, you could, and if you've raced through the rest of the exam and have plenty of time or whatever, you could step back and make a, a fresh new simpler case. Um, why would you possibly do that? Well, one, just to, you know, if you really want to show you know what you're doing, two, you might choose to pick numbers. Like one thing, I'll just say this, if you care. In class, we kept using the number 40 over and over again for the velocity of, 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 of like approach or recede. Here in this case, I used 80 to make a more dramatic difference. Um, you, if you're understanding all this and if you're not finding it too challenging, you see like the, the Doppler effect is more and more dramatic as the V gets higher. 
so you know you might if you wanted to you could you could actually make that point to me you could say you know if if i picked an even bigger number like you might pick a number close to 340 to see what happens or you might even pick a number at 340 to see what happens or maybe even higher like if you wanted to there there or, or you might just pick numbers that are even easier to work with. Like I kept picking 40 and I picked 80. Maybe you've done this enough times now that you have come to realize that it's much easier to just work with a number like 170 because that's half of 340. Like that might occur. Or, or, or put another way, the frequency, I used 440 because that's a real, it's a real number. 440 is middle A in a piano. And then here in, the, in this case, I used 500 because it's slightly easier to work with 440. But if you've done this enough times right now, you might decide using a frequency of 340 makes the point super more vividly than any other. Like, think about it. If you used a frequency of 340, you'd be dividing and getting numbers like one and stuff. You could make your point super clearly, way more clearly than I have on this whole page. So I, when I say use your own numbers, you could just use the numbers that you just generated on the last two pages and that's fine. Or it's an opportunity if you want to get more clever or more creative or more clear in a different way, you can use other numbers. I, and same thing with pictures, same thing. I'm saying here, this is your opportunity to interpret um, and really show what you understand. And there's different ways to do that. Um, but, but yeah, at a minimum, when I say use your own numbers, I mean the numbers that you were, that you were just working with um, refer to those. Um, I hope that answers that question, I think. But without a doubt, part E is where the most interpretation occurs uh, on your part and on my part of grading. Um, uh, but to be clear too, the, the points are intentional. Like if you just show that you understand the question, if you show that you understand the question and attempt to address it, I'm going to say right now, actually, if you show that you understand the question and attempt to address it, you'll get four points right away out of the 12. And think about that. That means if you rock everything up, if you got everything else right in the exam, all the rest of the straightforward parts, then since the rest of the exam is 88 points, you get four points there. That's a 92 right there. That's an A, right? Or I'll call it five. 93 is an A. So even at a bare minimum, if you just show you know what's going on, you could still get an A here. But I mean, if you really want to rock my world or really show me that you really have put together this course material, I think there's an opportunity to do a little bit better than that with those 12 points. Okay, I hope that answers, I don't know. Um, but what I want to do now with, there's 10 minutes left, I want to read the subscripts. Oh, cool, thank you. Thank you, awesome, I totally appreciate it. Thank you, that's so nice that you say that, okay. So now I want to quickly read out the subscripts because yes, some actually I'll even see was it public or was it because I think it's right the person that pointed out that the subscripts are hard to read and I think if I read them out loud also it'll put in oh yeah that was public so Yabo pointed out that the um, the subscripts are hard to read and they are so I think it will be a worthy exercise for me to quickly right now go through okay um, Oh, and by the way, this is called, just as a stupid plug also, this is my last opportunity. The reason this is called Charlene's Doppler debut is Charlene as in, as in, oh, you can't, as in this Charlene, well, you can't see, as in the Charlene of this book that we wrote a while ago and did a project on, um, this was what one really cool physics research project that was done a few years ago and is published and everything. And it's a children's story about um, a particle named Charlene, uh, Charlene the chew on, who, and the whole book is about particles versus waves for waves, and, and, and I recommend it. But anyway, so that's why this thing is called Charlene's. But um, okay, uh, um, so case 1W, the base case. So case 1W meaning, I'm reading from top left to bottom right. I think this is, and again, if you have other questions, oh, there are other questions, wait. I'm gonna do this until or unless there's other questions in the chat, because I do wanna make this as clear as possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, to Yabo's last question, totally. The ultimate point of this exam is you are showing that you understand the Doppler effect well enough to understand how the Doppler effect could be or is actually a test of waves versus particles. Yeah, that is totally. The, and, and also, by the way, as long as I'm making, because I think that's a huge deal. Like, um, I think it's like, if we're going to get a lesson out of physics, that's a big lesson. Let me say quickly too before I read the subscripts out. And you know, the more you can go crazy with those 12 points, you know, you can say as much as you want about that or not. Um, but please do remember, I'm here to tell you the dip 
asking whether something is a particle or a wave, remember that question is so old and can sound so dry and can sound so boring or whatever to you guys at this point. And it did for me at a similar point in college, but please remember if there's one lesson I'm trying to leave you with is when we ask whether something moves as a particle or moves like a wave, what we're really asking is, does the damn thing exist or not? Really, what we're really asking is, is something a particle or not? Meaning, is there a such thing as that thing or not? Like there is a such thing as an electron. There is not a such thing as a sound on. There's no such thing as a sound particle. Sound cannot be divided up into little, little, little tiny bits of sound. And that's not a technological limitation. That's a logical limitation. Like sound is an activity that little things undergo. Sound is not a thing that exists. Um, and whether light is or does move like particles or waves really means to ask whether light moves like particles or waves is really to ask, can light be divided up into little bits of light or not? Some, also, by the way, heat is another example. Heat cannot be divided up into little bits of heat. There's no such thing as a bit of heat. Once upon a time, people thought there was but we don't think that anymore. I mean, could it turn out that we're wrong again? I suppose, but I, I don't really actually think so on that one. But like, but even if it does turn out we're wrong, it's still a really interesting thing. We think some things exist in the world. We at this point in physics think something called protons like exist. We don't think things called hetons exist. I mean, that's like a big distinction. Now light, <clears throat> Oh, and, and I, I also have to quickly say, the Doppler effect is not the only way to know that. I'm not saying the Doppler effect is the only test. I'm just saying it is a test and it's deep enough and interesting enough that it's worth knowing about. It also happens to be the test that leads us to believe that that universe is expanding, which is kind of a big deal because like expanding into what? I don't know. I mean, like I literally, if someone just walked up to me and said, I believe the universe is expanding, I would absolutely say, well, you better have a reason for that because that statement doesn't even make sense. Like, what do you mean space is getting bigger and bigger all the time? How is space getting bigger? You mean space is taking up more space than it did yesterday? Like that doesn't even make any sense. There's no reason to believe it, except that <laughs> evidently the data says that it's true and the data is Doppler effect data. But okay, let me read the subscripts out. Um, uh, Okay, so in all the top left of this thing, it says, God, I can't even read it, it's true. It says VSM equals, wait, I'm gonna zoom in, but it says VSM equals zero, like velocity of the source relative to the medium equals zero. The, oh, no, sorry, 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 no, that means, sorry. It says VSA equals zero. The velocity of the source relative to air equals zero. That's what it says in the top left. The velocity of source relative to air equals zero meters per second. So the source is just sitting still in the air. Velo VWA equals 340 meters per second. So the velocity of the wave relative to air equals 340, i.e. we're talking about sound here. So that's VWA, the velocity of wave relative to air equals 340. Then it says, VRA equals zero. Velocity of the receiver relative to air equals zero. So in, the, and then it says finally, FWS equals 500 Hertz. The frequency of the wave relative to the source equals 500. Oh, let me look in the chat. And once you get used to the pattern, I don't think I'm gonna have to read every single one to get used to it, but so the, the, the things here are source, receiver, and air. Um, and W stands for wave. Um, so in this case, in case one W, the base case, we're talking about waves moving and everything's in one reference frame, meaning the source is just sitting there at zero, the receiver is just sitting there at zero, and the source sends a wave over it going at 340 relative to the air. And so, then I go through and solve everything. I think I might go back and read all those subscripts again, but let me just read the subscripts in the top cases first, just to make, so that you have all the facts. 
And I'll hold on, I'm gonna look in the chat also. Oh, cool. Oh, thank you. That's, oh, and she wrote it publicly. Thank you, Alyssa, that is super. So Alyssa wrote publicly that if you use your phone or a tablet, you can zoom into the PDF and see the subscripts perfectly. That's super helpful, because yeah, it's true. I, 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 so I'm not gonna sit here and read all of them, but I will still read the top three. Oh, is there another? I'm still gonna read the facts, the top three, just again, if nothing else to make, is it right for um, That's a good question, Yambo. I do understand that question, but I don't remember the, this was, yeah, it probably is because when I originally made this, I did it in a math, in a math document maker. So it may, I forget, it's a vector graphic versus what's the other option? Vector graphic versus um, what's the other thing that it could be? Uh, but yeah, I think it is a vector graphic, sorry about that. Uh, but, but yeah, if you keep it as a PDF and zoom in, um, that should work, but I'll read the facts across the top anyway. So case one was W base case, all in one reference frame, then case two W source approaches. So now we have um, uh, uh, VSA equals 80, VWA equals 340, VR, a equals zero, F, W, S equals 500. And these, by the way, also, this is, I mean, I'm not trying to make these things small to annoy you guys, but if you look back at your notes, this should all be consistent with the way that we do it in the notes. Um, um, but do please notice, I guess this is a good opportunity as I'm reading, so I'll say that again, in case two W source approaches, we have V, um, V, S A equals 80, V W A equals 340, V R A equals zero, F W S equals 500. Notice that nowhere in the original facts am I ever putting in a minus sign. Like I'm giving you, and if I should, I should put double absolute values or something over what I'm giving you, like when I say V like that, I'm giving you the speed, the magnitude, of, of the motion, and then you decide whether to put minus signs in or, not, or how to put minus signs in base on your diagram. Um, all right, but that's that one. And then case three W receiver approaches, V S A equals zero, V W A equals 340. Oh, I guess I am putting a minus sign. All right, V, well, I guess I am. V R A equals negative 80. Well, there you go. And F W A equals 500. Um, I'm not gonna keep reading. And look, also, honestly, since I know we're, oh, we are just about out of time. If you have a subscript problem and you can't zoom in there, definitely text me. I mean, if it comes down to you can't read the subscripts, text me and I'll try to make a bigger, I'll either just tell you in the text or I'll make a bigger thing. Um, uh, uh, but let me look in the chat. I know it's 1.30 and there's something in the chat. Oh, right, yeah. Okay, right. So I don't remember which one this is. I mean, I think it's a vector graphic. I do understand that question or I did it one time, but I don't remember the answer, sorry. Um, okay, but it is 1.30. Um, hopefully this makes some sense. I mean, hopefully it'll take some thought on your part. So it's a worthwhile final exam, but hopefully it won't be too stressful or whatever. It is due midnight of Tuesday of next week. Um, uh, um, you, I will miss you guys very much. I hope to see you in some capacity later on somehow, some way. Um, if you need recommendations or anything like that, text me, um, um, blah, blah, blah. But I don't want to keep you uh, late. Um, but I wish you the best. And remember also, nobody needs to fail this class. And I don't need to give a maximum number of A's. Like, I'm just as happy as you. If all of you end up getting A's, I'm delighted. And there's no problem with that. So please do, if you can. Um, and that's all I've got. But thank you very much. And Cork bless America. Professor, thank you for an amazing semester. <laughs> thank you very much. I am going to miss you. I'm going to miss you. For sure. You, I, you are very kind. I won't admit it, but no, thank you guys very much. I'm, and I'm going to, I'm saying goodbye. Thank you guys very much. And I'm going to wait till everybody's gone just for the sake. So you guys go. Don't wait for me to go. You guys go. Um, and I will thank post. You Have a great thank summer. you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. Enjoy your summer. Thank you. You too. Yes, summer. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. We'll miss you. I will miss you guys. And this is good. Don't make me cry. And I don't, I don't want to see a grown man cry. Thank you very much.
Me and Ishan are gonna miss bothering you. That's a whole fact. We're gonna we miss are, bothering you. We <laughs> for sure. That was some of our games. Ishan was like, for some of the games, I just put we're bothering him. <laughs> you, good luck. You couldn't if you tried. That's the thing. You have not. <laughs> no, I will miss you guys very much. And I'm gonna. Uh, oh yeah, a ton. But yes, look at Amazon. Type my name into Amazon, and you'll see. <laughs> yes, and. And don't buy them, but write reviews anyway. Um, but Wait, you wrote a book? Books are galore. They all they're all terrible, but they're all yeah. Just type my name into Yaver. I mean, type my name into Yaver. I mean, it's Amazon. Huh. And and don't spend money on them. But just write fake reviews. Um, but oh, order. I'm definitely doing that, Ishan. We're definitely doing that. <laughs> you're too kind. We definitely right. are. Now, now get all right. You're making me. I'm. You're making me more uncomfortable than my own DNA does. Um, um, okay, well, I hope to see. I really hope to see you guys around. And I am. I I just have this rule that I have to wait until everybody goes, which is a stupid. So go, go. All right. Thank you. Have a great summer. Bye. Bye. You too. Bye, thank you. Bye. 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 I talk to you. Too. Bye. 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 Thank you so much, Brian. Thank. Bye. Hello. Hello. Wait. So did that work? Wait. I'm a little. Hold on. Hi. Wait. Wait. One. I was a little. Oh yeah, it did. Work. Okay. That was all right. Sorry. That was a little awkward. I sh I should have actually uh, turned the thing off and turned it back on. Okay. But anyway. So you. Okay. So you. So you guys are both. It like it's it's. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We both got into prism. That is great. Oh wait, let me turn off this other the screen share thing. This is stupid. Hold on. Um, that's great. Oh, in fact, let me also turn off the recording. Hold on a second. I didn't do that last time. One second. One second. One second. Let me do that. Wait, how do I turn?